All right, everyone, we're going to try to be punctual here and get started on time. Um, hopefully we'll have the rest of the crew join us as we get into uh, the guts of our presentation here. But I'm really excited to be presenting to everybody today. Um, you know, thank you all for making some time to, to see this presentation. And my goal today is to send everybody away with some actionable items that they can really take care of themselves. And they don't have to depend on the tech savviness of a web developer or an SEO company. So we really want um, to give you some things that you can do. And uh, we'll definitely have questions at the end. So if you'll just save those or if you want to send them in, we're going to take a look at those as we get uh, to the end of the presentation, and I'll address everything at that point. My name is Scott Holstein. I've been a business development associate at Search Influence for over a year now, and I've really enjoyed my time here. I came over from the hospitality industry where I learned a few things. I learned a lot about customer service, which has served me really well in all of my roles since. And I also learned that I really enjoy digital media. I really found my passion for digital media within uh, the hospitality industry by running the Facebook page and the Twitter page and then really growing out from there. And I, I followed that passion to search influence. And when I got to search influence, I hadn't realized all they had already accomplished. Search influence was started in 2006 in the wake of Hurricane Katrina here in New Orleans. And it was started by our CEO and CEO I'm sorry, CEO and COO, Will and Angie Scott, who are husband and wife and um, are to this day still running the company. Will's really the face of the company, while Angie is our day-to-day uh, -day operations manager. Um, we've grown now to about 55 people in-house. We also have another 70-plus contract workers who are vast majority of those are writers who are writing everything from Facebook posts to website copy for us. Um, but we've accomplished a lot in the last few years. We were named to the Inc. 500 list in 2011 and then the Inc. 5000 list the past two years. So that's something that we're really proud of and we're, we're growing at an exponential rate. Um, but what we do is online marketing. And so that's really what we're going to be breaking down for you today. Particularly, we want to talk about SEO, paid search, and social media. And so we're going to take those kind of one by one, but we found that those were going to be the top three topics that could be most helpful to somebody running a, uh, a private college bookstore. And so you ask yourself, why online marketing? You know, it's, it's something that everybody's become a part of, and it almost seems like a necessity. Everybody, everybody's online now, but you've, you've, you've been doing things in the past that have been successful for you, so why do you need to start marketing online? Well, one reason is everybody is online. I mean, people are searching for local business online more than ever. And with everyone having a smartphone in their pocket, that's really the way that we find everything. And as you see here, nine of 10 smartphone searches end in an action, whether that be a visit to the store, a call, getting directions. When you're searching on your smartphone, you're searching for something on an immediate basis. So it's, it's generally a really good um, target to have. And when you look at the demographic that you're targeting, you know that they have smartphones and they're online, and that's how they find everything these days. So it's really a very strong reason to uh, be online. Then you look at how people find local businesses. And Print Yellow Pages has still a surprisingly high market share here. But I think, as we can all agree, it's one that's decreasing and one that is not used very often by the younger demographic. So you definitely want to keep in mind your demographic when looking at this graph. You see internet yellow pages and search engine uh, and then search engines as you're you know in the top three there that's taking up a significant portion. And I found this graph to be really shocking. This, uh, this pie chart shows that over 63 percent of small businesses are now using social media as a viable source of marketing. And it's really shocking to me because about the same percentage has websites. So as, as many people who have websites out there are actually on social media. So you get the idea that small businesses are, are really getting into this, this digital revolution. And really, everybody's doing it. And if your competitors are doing it, it's something you really have to take a close look at because those 
you know, those college bookstores that you're competing against are online, and, uh, and it's just something at this point you can't ignore because everyone else is there. And so the question is, how do you get there? How do you show up in these search engines? And that's what we're going to talk about first, is search engine optimization. And all search engine optimization is, is the process of affecting your visibility, um, the, visibility the visibility of your website in particular, in search engine results. And it's really just telling search engines what you're going to serve their users with. So if you're the best result for college bookstores in your area, then search engines are going to show you as that. But the things that search engines take into consideration change quite a bit. And uh, the only things that we've really found consistent are keywords, content, and connections. And the keywords are really just the keywords you use on and off your site. Um, the content that you're providing, making sure that it's high quality and not duplicative of any other content on the internet, and then the connections that you have to other websites. Um, when, when search engines see that you have strong connections to other websites, they, they build your trust and authority a little bit more with that. So why is optimizing so important? Because no one goes to the second page of Google. It's basically, you know, it's it's basically just it, it's almost completely useless. About nine out of ten people never leave the first page of search engines, and this number has been shown to be higher at times. Um, but if you're, I mean, if you're not on page one, you're almost not present. I mean, having a website is great, but if you know if you're not actually showing up in search results, then people are likely not finding you very often. So what are some of these objectives um, that we have with search engines? Of course, it's to make Google love you. And the reason you're doing that is so you can start showing up in search results, start getting more visitors to your website, and ultimately sell something. Because all the traffic to your website in the world is great, but if it's not making you money, then it's not really not really doing you a service. And when we say, uh, you know, make Google love you, this is why. Google owns the search engine market share. They really have for the past several years. Um, you'll see that Bing and Yahoo take a decent amount of space up on there, but Google has the vast majority and will likely continue to. So a lot of what we're going to talk about today is really geared towards um, what Google wants to see in your website. Um, but at the same time, of course, Bing and Yahoo are going to be included in, in those same things as well because they want to give their users the best results um, as well. So to understand search engine optimization, you really have to understand how it all works. And the way that Google goes about, uh, goes about indexing all that information is with robots, and they call them spiders. So that spider that you see on your screen, although it is festive for Halloween, is actually not for that reason. It is because the Google spiders are constantly crawling the web and they're looking for new information and looking for who's giving who's giving their users the best content. And when they've searched that information out, they can really tell based off of keywords what's coming up, um, you know, what's going to what websites are going to give their users the best result for those particular keywords. All right, and we have, then on top, we have paid search results. Paid search results, better known as Google AdWords or PPC, are a place where you can pay to get to the top of results on a very immediate basis. You can, you can get there as soon as you open up the campaign. And a really common uh, thing that I hear, an objection that I hear on a daily basis, really, is I don't ever click on those ads because I know they're ads. I don't, you know, I know they're not giving me the best results. Um, but the fact of the matter is that about 20 to 30 percent of people do click on those ads. And if you're getting them to your site, that's really your goal anyway. So it's really a strong way to reach your audience very quickly and on a more broad basis. So I'll go into that more a little bit later. But for now, we'll go on down to the local search results. And local search results are based off of 
where the searcher is and where these businesses are located. And then finally, and most importantly, the consistency of your business listings throughout the web. And again, we're going to break all of these down, but organic search is just below that. And organic search results are based off of the content on and off your site that is telling search engines that you're the authority on a particular topic. And so now we'll go into how to do this. How, how can you affect your search engine optimization um, on site? How do, you, how do you actually do this stuff? And so we're going to start on site and then we'll work off site here. And as you'll see, there are a lot of different opportunities on site to optimize your website. First off, you really have to start with keyword research. You have to know what people are searching for to find your services. And although you have a pretty good idea, it's always better to know exactly how much search is behind particular words. Uh, for example, you'll see our keyword research tool here shows that Car Repair New Orleans gets actually less search than Auto Repair New Orleans LA. And it's a significant amount. It's, and it's something that you know, uh, an auto body uh, owner might not know. It's, it's really something you have to research and be thorough with. You want to make sure that you have every variation of your services and your business name and things like that, and also variations of the locations that you serve. So you'll see up on the uh, top right there, you have New Orleans, New Orleans, LA, in New Orleans, in New Orleans, LA. And a really good tool to do this is linked at the bottom there. You'll see the adwords.google.com. And um, again, this slideshow will be uh, email to you later, so don't feel like you have to scramble and write everything down, but um, there are a lot of good free keyword tools out there, so um, don't feel like just because we're showing you our keyword tool that it's something that you don't have access to. So once you know what people are searching for to find your services, you have to figure out where do I put these keywords? And one of the biggest things you have to keep in mind is that it really needs to be as natural as possible when you integrate your keywords. But there are certain places that you have to include them. And a good, a good place to start is within your metadata. And metadata just means data about data. It's, um, it's a, basically just a way to tell search engines, this is what's on my page, and this is what you should show my, you, this is what you should show this page for. And so you'll look here at the top and you have your title tag. And the title tag is probably the most important piece of content on your website. And you'll see it's located here as well as in the screenshot of the search result. And it's, it's a very strong keyword. You know, you see Albany Spa. That is what somebody would search who is located in Albany looking for a spa or Day Spa Albany. Again, another really good example of keywords being used in the title tag. And what we generally recommend is to have that keyword as the first part of your title tag and then either a pipe or a dash or something along those lines and then your brand name after that because brand has become even more important lately um, within Google search results. And just below you'll see the uh, alt tag here on our uh, complexions logo. And alt tags are just how you name images. So when you go to add images to your website, make sure that their names are relevant because search engines don't know what images are. They read your file name and that's as much as you can really tell them. But it's another place that you can use your keywords, use your brand name, and make sure that you're consistent with all of that. And then finally, you have the meta description down here in the bottom. And the meta description isn't so much for keyword, I'm sorry, not so much for search engines as it is for users. So when you do show up on that first page, this is your two-line sales pitch to get somebody to click on your result. And a really good way to do that is include those keywords close to the front of that description because when you see those bolded keywords, you automatically think, okay, this is exactly what I'm looking for. Then you have your on-page content, and this is more on the front end of what you're going to be showing 
your users, but you have to keep in mind that Google is is developed by a bunch of engineers, and so you have to give it to them in a very structured way. So they like to see headings. Here you have heading one and heading two tags, and these are, again, a good place to use keywords, but it's more important to give your users a good experience than it is to give your search engines a good experience. So make sure when it comes to these heading tags that you are making it really relevant and interesting so they want to continue to read that content below. And that content below is a really good place to mention your keywords as well. The, uh, the rule of thumb that we use is to use your keywords about once every 100 words. And that's something we usually stick by. And we also recommend using at least 250 words on each page. You want search engines to see, search engines to see that you're offering a significant amount of information that is going to be helpful to their users. And then finally, you see the um, anchor text and internal linking here. And the reason that you want to include these internal links is not only for users who are reading the text and saying, oh, Complexion's gift card's perfect. Um, I'll just do that and click over right here. It's also so search engines, when crawling your website with those robots, they hit that link and then they take it, they, uh, they follow that link to the next page. And it just gives your website a better chance to be crawled more frequently by Google. And then Honey Boo Boo's got it right here. Um, content is king. And whenever you're providing search engines with good content, it, you're, you're going to be getting yourself a much better chance to show up in search results. And so talk about the things that your business offers. Talk about solutions to the problems that your customers might be facing. Um, but the better the content, um, the more likely that it's going to be shared and you know, really going to be linked to as, as well. Another really strong tactic for SEO is blogging. And the reason we highly recommend blogging is because it allows for fresh content on your site and that keeps those spiders coming back. Keyword um, usage is also very important within blogging. And then it positions you as an expert in your industry. And when you know people see that, it, it just you know it affirms to them that you're the right person to buy from. We highly recommend using WordPress um, as your CMS for blogging. And the reason for that is WordPress is very customizable and it's very SEO friendly. Um, they actually have SEO plugins, which are just really an add-on to the blog that shows search engines, this is what my blog is all about, and you know you should you should index my blog and realize that I'm going to be posting regularly. Some of the SEO blogging plugins that we highly recommend are All-in-One SEO and Yoast, and Yoast is Y-O-A-S-T. You'll see here this is a really good example of one of our clients' websites. It's a very sleek looking website, and then our blog that we built for them is extremely, extremely similar to the actual site. So we're not creating something completely different here. And something that you should know is just because you have maybe a website in a different CMS doesn't mean that you can't have your blog in WordPress. And you'll also notice here, you look at the, uh, the title of the blog, and it's answering a question that a lot of people who are considering these kind of services are asking. And, and that's something you have to keep in mind, is answer questions that your customers want to know and write about things that your customers want to read. And this is a great example of that as well. Healthcare reform is a really hot topic right now. And if, you're, if you can you know, relate to any hot topics in the news, we highly recommend to do that. Um, taking a really strong position on uh, the topics in the news might not be advisable, but definitely look out there and see how can I relate my business to this and then you know you can write a blog about it and you never know it it may get picked up somewhere and may get shared by the right person and um, could help you in the long run and another great feature that WordPress offers is authorship and what authorship is is just connecting your content to your Google Plus profile so um, I put the link there um, the plus.google.com forward slash authorship, and that'll give you a detailed um, 
detailed instructions on how to set up your authorship. And it's not a, a terribly complicated process, but what you, you see what it does is it puts those images of the blog writer next to search results. So um, when you're searching for something and you see nothing but text on a page, you're likely to pick up on that image pretty quickly. And we've seen great results in getting people to click on um, results with those images there as opposed to just the text. Then you have off-site off SEO, and this is anything that you do that is off of your actual website. And when we start with off-site SEO, we always say, let's start with NAP. And it's unfortunately not this kind of NAP, but it's an acronym for name, address, and phone number. And name, address, and phone number, as simple as it seems, gets messed up a lot over, you know, over time throughout the internet. This is an example of Oak Wine Bar. Um, we're actually located right above Oak Wine Bar right now. And Oak Wine Bar has, a, you know, they've done a good job of putting that, putting that out there. But you hear me call it Oak Wine Bar. It's actually called Oak Wine Bar and Bistro. So whenever they list their business out there on various, you know, websites, whether it be Google Plus or YP.com or Merchant Article or, I'm sorry, Merchant Circle, um, it really needs to be consistent that, you know, that name can be, can vary in so many different ways. And um, the thing with the address, um, how you would abbreviate street or, um, you know, how you, if you have a suite number, how you abbreviate that suite number, it all really needs to stay consistent throughout all of your listings. And so a good place to start with all of this information are Google, Yahoo, and Bing, which are, of course, the big three search engines, and then Yelp. And the reason that Yelp is a big deal is because for any service-related search, Yelp is likely going to come up in the top three to five results, if not number one. So um, having a strong Yelp profile is really a good place to start. And um, I mean, the others are kind of obvious, but I'd say that those are my top four profiles to go out there and make sure that if they're or profiles out there for you, go out there and claim those profiles as the business owner, or you know, go out there and create those profiles and tell search engines that tell search engines what you do and where you're located. And then we have the local search ecosystem. And you'll see that all ends at Google Plus Local or Google Maps. And <clears throat> this is really kind of a complicated web of how this name, address, and phone number information gets pushed around the internet. And the two, uh, the two data feeds that we really like to use are UBL, which you'll see here, and then New Star Localese, because they're pushing out to a lot of the other larger feeds. And as a result, that information gets pushed around the web um, fairly quickly. And when you go out and claim these profiles, don't just add the name, address, and phone number information. If they give you an opportunity, give your business description. Before you go and do that, really take a hard look at your, your bio for your business. So create like a 200-word bio to include in all of those, uh, all those listings out there. And if you have an opportunity to, to post or um, really do anything outside of a description, you know, add categories or anything like that, Make sure that you're doing that and taking advantage of it, and particularly on Google+. Google+, Plus is obviously a Google product, and Google wants you to use their products, and they will reward you for it. So um, if you can be on Google+, and, and be posting on a regular basis, it's certainly not going to hurt. Something else that I wanted to mention here, going back to the last slide, is getlisted.org. Um, it's also a, another great place to start to see where are my business listings right now? And um, it'll give you a list of um, citations that they recommend. And like I said, there's probably a lot of information on your business out there already. So if you know that you've changed addresses at one point, you have a, a phone number that's out there, you have a variation of any kind, this is a good way to go out and fix those variations. So Search Influence, um, the company that I work for, 
was previously located at 1423 Pine Street. So what I did here is I put search influence in quotes, which is the correct business name and how we want to be listed, a plus sign, and then in quotes I put the bad address or the old address. And sure enough, you get all the search results with that old address. And you can go in and edit those and even you know, claim those as the business owner and, again, add content. Some other off-site SEO contacts. Uh, I'm sorry, tactics are uh, are based around building links back to your website. And uh, there are a couple of really strong ways to do that. Um, infographics is one. And infographics are just a graphical visual rep representation of information in a simplified way. So, you know, you have, you have topics like this, for example, you know, how much textbook costs, how much textbooks cost, and um, then you can do something also along the lines of really university-related things, things that are going to be popular, things that are going to be shared. And the reason for this is it's going to bring traffic to your site. And when people share your information or you know, they share a link to this infographic or whatever kind of content you've shared, it's linking back to your website and it's telling search engines that you have good information. And then there's YouTube. YouTube is the number two search engine behind Google and also a Google product. So again, you want to be where Google wants you to be. And using search engines like YouTube are you know, really a strong signal to Google that you're active online and you're going to give good content. So this is a, a great example of LSU Bookstore. Um, has a YouTube channel and they have tips for freshmen. And again, a very relevant topic, but what LSU didn't do well here is they didn't link back to themselves. So you can actually put a link down in the description of your YouTube videos. But helpful videos like this definitely build your authority as the expert on the college books. Then there's social bookmarking. And if you're not familiar with social bookmarking, all it is is a way to share and organize um, bookmarks or pages that you know you think are shareable that you really like. And so, what you would social bookmark to build up your site and build up um, sites linking to your site as authorities um, are those pages. And what you're doing is promoting sites that are promoting your site. And so it helps strengthen the links going back to your site by showing search engines that they're being read and they're being shared. They're not just linking back to you for the heck of it. And SEO is an ongoing process. It's, it's something that never ends. So um, you know, when you think that, OK, I've done all I can with these keywords, look at your, look at your next keywords. Look at what other people are um, searching for and, and find out you know, what's next, because it's definitely a lather, rinse, and repeat scenario. And it will take time. Um, it's not something that happens overnight. It's something we really preach here is you know, give it some time, maybe six months. But make sure that you're recording the results. And it's very, very measurable when you're talking about traffic and things like that. Um, and the way you do that is with um, Google Analytics. And if you'll go, just go to google.com forward slash analytics, it's fairly easy to add this information to your site. And that's a great way to go back and look at, hey, I had this many visits to my, uh, I have this many visits to my site this month, and then it dropped off this month, and it got better because I made this adjustment. Um, but some statistics you might want to look at <coughs> when going into Google Analytics are time spent on your site, um, the bounce rate, so how many people are coming to your site, hitting one page, and then leaving, and then you want to see pages per visit, and I don't think that that's necessarily a, a really, you know, the be all end all of um, how to measure success of your website. But Google has started to take that started to take that into consideration when it comes to giving their users quality content. That's how they judge that: is this person came to the site, they visited 10 pages, and they were on there for 10 minutes. Um, so that's a way that Google is judging how good your content is. So that's something that you need to be paying, paying attention to as well. And here are just a few more links to some really helpful SEO blogs and websites. Um, 
these are going to keep you up with any changes that Google's making, any great content ideas that people have. Um, but I highly recommend um, checking out Search Engine Journal, Street Fight, all of these different places for a little bit more in-depth advice. And then we have paid search. And uh, the saying goes, just because you paid for it doesn't make it less satisfying, right? And what we mean by that is, if you paid for somebody to get to your website and they made a purchase, who cares that you paid for it? It just, it works. So paid search, um, like we said earlier, also known as Google AdWords, is great for seasonal businesses. And I think, um, I think that it'd be perfect for those, you know, those early months of the semester and those later months of the semester um, when students are looking to, to sell or buy books at that time. So the reason that it's good for seasonal business is you can you can budget you know a lot of a lot of your marketing dollars up front, um, say in July, August, and then turn it completely off in October, November. So it gives you that option, and it's not something that you have to do on an ongoing basis, but it does get you where you want to be and when you want to be there. It also allows you to use a wide array, a wide, <laughs> a wide array of keywords, and uh, I mean that could be you know anything from books, you know, college bookstore, San Diego State, or um, actually the name of a textbook. So you can get really, really specific when it comes to Google AdWords, as where with SEO, you probably want to pick five or ten keywords and really work on those for a while. Um, the biggest difference between SEO and paid search are the fact that, or is the fact that paid search is really renting the space, as where SEO, you're kind of owning it. Um, and then, of course, those organic results do get more clicks, but we think that paid search is a really, really great tool, and part of the reason is um, tracking conversions on page search is very easy. I mean, they just Google gives you more information about paid search vis visitors because they want you to use their product. This is just a quick example of you know a very vague search term, and I don't think that anybody would probably want to run on you know just college textbooks. But um, <clears throat> you'll see here again, you have your little brief area to do a little sales pitch and get them to click through to your page, and then you want to have an optimized landing page, and landing page is just where people go after they click on your ad, and you'll see here, you have calls to action, and this is the most important thing about a landing page is buy or rent books or sell your books or call, and if you don't, you know, if you don't have your, if your website's not full of all the information that you want it to, you would want it to be, maybe your call to action is come see us now, or you know, here's our phone number, make that phone number big and bold and, um, you know, call now to see if we have your book. And then finally we have uh, social media and more specifically Facebook. And the reason I want to concentrate more on Facebook is because it is easily the best place to advertise when it comes to social media. And if Facebook were a country, it would be the third largest country in the world. It simply, you know, has everybody and their grandmother on it, literally, at this point. Um, you know, you have grandmothers on Facebook. No offense to those grandmothers out there. But what social media has become is really a content vehicle. And what I mean by that is when you have really great content, so you have a great video or image or article that you want to share, this is where you want to be. Facebook has become one of the top visited websites in the U.S. and or one of the top visit, visited um, website properties, so not even just websites. And if you look at the other names on that list, they're huge. I mean, you're talking about competing with the likes of Google, Yahoo, Microsoft, and Amazon. Um, you're talking about some of the biggest companies in the world. I mean, quite frankly, it's just everywhere, and Facebook is something that, you know, that people are a little bit afraid to use for a business tactic or afraid to allot too many resources to because they have a hard time justifying the ROI and really seeing the ROI. But um, I'll cover in a little bit how you can kind of track that. 
if you look here, you have the top searched um, keywords or top searched terms on Google for 2013, and Facebook is the number one search term on Google. Um, and then you actually have Facebook login down at the bottom there, and it's kind of funny that you see these um, you see these search terms because rather than put Facebook.com in the URL, people actually are using a search engine to get to Facebook. So it just shows you um, how <clears throat> how interwound it all is. And so you look here, um, it looks like the vast majority of small business owners are trying to use Facebook to acquire customers. And quite frankly, it's not quite there yet. I, I think that Facebook is a great tool for, um, again, pushing out your content, sharing content, and then engaging, in, engaging your current customers, possibly engaging new customers, and keeping your brand in front of their eyes. So when they are looking for your product. You, know, you have that. You have that presence um, already when they start to think about who should I, you know, who should I go buy my books from. When you start to create your Facebook page, if you don't already have one, <clears throat> or if you do already have one, you really need to make sure that you fill out as much of the information as they allow. As you'll see, the name, address, and phone number becomes very relevant here again. Um, but it also allows you to put in categories um, as well as your <clears throat> your business information and your uh, hours of operation. And when you go to make your page, uh, too many times I see people use, or I see I see businesses in particular use images for their profile photo and cover photo that don't really fit. The dimensions of you know those those photos, and so I just say be careful with that. I mean, make sure you're using some high definition um, some high definition photos. There are a lot of tools out there you can use to create custom images, particularly custom cover photos. Uh, and I, I really think that when you're talking about representing your brand, you know, you wouldn't put out anything out there um, in print that didn't look good that was representing your brand. So you certainly don't want to do that online either. And then make sure you have those buttons on your website that allow people to engage with you on that on that other level. I mean, you're not trying to take people away from your website by any means. But <clears throat> if I'm on your website and I'm surfing around and I'm trying to decide if you're the right um, vendor for me, I want to see your social channels and I want to see what is you know what is this company all about. And I think that having those buttons on there makes it more readily available and will probably help you uh, help you build up your fan base as well. And so Google Analytics comes in again and is really one of the best tools to measure the success of social media. You'll see here, you can clearly see how many visitors came to the website in a given period of time from different social channels. and what you really, you know, you really can't tell, it really can't tell you how many people are actually coming in the store, but if it can tell you how many people are going to your website, the point of your website is to, you know, finish that sale anyway. So a lot of people ask, what do I post on Facebook? I mean, if I have to post every day, how do I find, find out what I'm supposed to post? And what we've recommended is kind of a mix of different kinds of posts. We recommend 30% educational, 30% calls to action, and then 40% engagement posts. And what an educational post is, is just something about your industry or your area that's going on that you're just telling um, all of your fans, hey, you know, we're paying attention to this stuff and, uh, you know, this is just some informational, um, some informational stuff where you hear. And then you have your call to action posts. And these are really the ones that you're trying to drive people to some kind of action, whether it be to visit your website or come in the store. Um, these will be your more salesy posts, if you will. And finally, you have 40% engagement. And this is really any way to engage with your fan base. You have to keep in mind when posting for all of this who your audience is. And engagement posts are you know, some of the most important posts because these are the ones that are probably going to get the most interaction and allow, you know, your Facebook fans to really 
you know, really connect with you on a different level. So what about Facebook advertising? Facebook advertising has become one of, I, I think, the best ways to reach people. Um, the competition hasn't really gotten there yet, so the cost of running Google AdWords is probably about, you know, 20 to 50 percent more than running that of a uh, Facebook ad. So Facebook ads is definitely something you want to look at. I think the ads that everybody are familiar, everybody here is probably familiar with, are the marketplace ads that show up on the side of your screen, and these are really good. You know, they're they're targeted ads. Um, then the like ads that encourage you to, you know, like a page that your friends just liked or um, you know, calls you to like a page for a particular reason. And we highly recommend this as well. We do this on a, a very regular basis uh, for all of our clients to build their fan base because if you're out there posting great content, you don't have fans, you're really just kind of posting out there for no reason. And then there are sponsored stories and promoted posts, which are probably my two foremost recommendations when it comes to Facebook advertising. And the reason is that the promoted posts and sponsored stories show up within the timeline and they show up looking like a post <clears throat> and you can't really decipher the fact that it's a sponsored it's sponsored content. Um, so people are going to see this, you know, the mobile users are going to see this and you can be extremely, extremely targeted with Facebook ads and, and Facebook promoted posts. You can tell search engines, or I'm sorry, you can tell Facebook, I want to target people who live in this area, I want to target people who go to this school, who have this major, and who are, you know, who are 23 years old. So you can have a pretty good idea of what this person is looking for, and you can deliver a really, really relevant um, post to them, and, and hopefully drive them to some kind of action. So does, uh, you know, do Facebook ads work? Do the promoted posts work? Um, in our experience, it's been really, really strongly, um, really, I mean, it's really, really a strong yes. You see here, you have the Audubon Zoo, um, one of our clients here, and they have two similar posts, um, you know, nothing terribly different, um, but what we did here was we just let the organic post do what it was going to do, and it did very well. It got over 3,000 likes, and then here you're right in the same neighborhood, but we were able to reach another almost 11,000 people just by promoting that post. And the price of promoting posts really varies depending on the number of people you're promoting it to. Facebook allows you to promote to your fans as well as the friends of your fans, <clears throat> and you can get a little bit more specific than that. But the reason we probably promoted this one, and I'm not, you can't say for certain, but as we were promoting it because we want people to go to this particular event. This is another really good example of posts that were really popular, but we were able to reach almost 30,000 people with this post. And what I, what I mean by reach is, you know, this post was seen by 30,000 people. Now, a lot of people also interacted with it. You'll see you had 152 shares and 142 comments, but it was extremely effective, and it's something that we had control over. You know, we, we told Facebook, we want this many people to see our post, and we want them to be in this demographic. And this is another great example of why you need to be on Facebook, is it's become a place where people can review you. And they can tell, you know, they can tell you that they need your services or they used your services. And you want to make sure that you address both good and bad reviews here. So what does all this mean to you? What is all this um, online marketing, how does it apply to campus, I'm sorry, but how does it apply to privately owned bookstores? And I'll tell you, your competition is on there. Whether you are or not, they are going to be competing for customers with you, and if you're not competing online, that's just, you know, one leg up that they'll have on you there. And really, your demographic is online, and that's probably the biggest reason you need to be there as well. So don't be scared of online marketing. It's, it's really not as bad as you think. And if you just embrace it, I promise you'll see dividends pay out, paid out, whether it be 
sooner or later. Um, it's just something that you really have to pay attention to and uh, and make make really make a concerted effort and can, and really allot some resources to to uh, see results. I want to thank everybody for uh, for coming today. Now I'd like to address any questions that anybody has. I really Again, I appreciate you guys hanging on here. I know it's about 45 minutes, um, so we're done a little bit early. We have some extra time. Um, if anybody has questions, now would be the time to address them. Again, all of my information is here. So if you come up with anything later, have any questions, or even would like to have me just do a, a quick site evaluation for you, feel, feel free to email me. Um, you, also have my, uh, you also have my Twitter handle there. <clears throat> And if you'll check out the Search Influence blog, I blog there. I also blog on chamberofcommerce.com. But the Search Influence blog is a great spot to see some really intelligent people talking about online marketing.